Okay, hello. We're doing a whole, I'm doing a whole bunch of Atwood machine problems. And today's problem I'm going to solve is a half Atwood machine with friction. So the half Atwood machine has a block on a table and a block hanging over a pulley like that. And they're two different masses. And in this case, I've done this problem already without friction. So let me show you the one, other ones I've done so far. These are all the Atwood. I have a whole bunch more. So the first I did was the Atwood machine problem. Uh, so this is two masses hanging over pulley, and I found the acceleration. And then I did the half Atwood machine without friction, and I got the acceleration. And then I did an incline plane half Atwood machine. So it's the same thing as this, but it's on an incline. I got the acceleration. And then finally, I did this problem, which is a half Atwood machine, and I wanted to find the final speed. I used work energy to do that. Okay. So what's different here is that I have a frictional force on block two. Block one just hanging there. So I'm going to continue to use the same masses for M1 is 100, M2 is 50, and then I picked a coefficient of friction of 0.1 and the kinetic friction and static friction of 0.15 just for fun. I don't even know if this is going to work. Okay. Okay, so let's first talk about friction. If I have a block on a surface like this, um, I should say the other two things I've said before, but the acceleration of block 2, the magnitude is equal to the magnitude of the acceleration of block one because they have the same string connected on them. If the string does not stretch and this moves down a centimeter in a one second, that has to move over a centimeter one second, so they have the same velocities. If they have the same velocities, they're gonna to have to have the same accelerations. The other thing is the tension on one magnitude is equal to the tension on two magnitude. And I say magnitudes because this one's accelerating that one that way, and this one's accelerating down. They can't be the same vector, right? They're just the same magnitude. And the tension on this, this string pulling on two has to be equal to the tension on one because it's a massless string. And so those are my two rules for Atwood machine I have so far. So if I have a block, let's look at block two, and I'm pulling it with this some force T that way, uh, what other forces are acting on it? Well, I have the gravitational force pulling down, M2, G, and then I have the normal force pushing up. I'll just call that N. Now, there's another force, and that's the frictional force, and it will be in the opposite direction of the motion. It actually could be in the opposite direction to prevent it from sliding, technically. So it's not really the opposite direction of motion, but that's usually this case. So I'm going to say F, F. And we use the model for friction depends on the coefficient of friction and how hard these two surfaces are pushing together. So the magnitude of this frictional force is going to be equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force, if it's sliding. If it's not sliding, then it's going to be equal to less than or equal to the coefficient of friction, static friction times the normal force. And this just says that if you pull with just a small force, and you have a giant friction force pulling back, it's not going to accelerate backwards. Okay, so it just does whatever it needs to do to prevent it from moving. I hope that we can use this one, but I haven't worked out the numbers yet. So let's assume we're using that one. Okay, so if that's true, then the first thing I need to do is to solve for this normal force. So I'm going to look at block two and I say F net Y is going to be equal to N minus M2G equals zero. And it's equal to zero because this block does not accelerate in the y direction if it stays on the plane. So that means that n equals m2g if I just add m2 to both sides. So that's good. Now if I look at the x direction, I could say f net x is going to be t minus the frictional force, and that's going to be equal to m2 times a. And I'm assuming the whole thing's accelerating this way, so it's going to be in the positive x direction. And I don't know A, and I don't know T, okay? But I can substitute in this model for the frictional force. If I do that, I get T minus mu K times the normal force, which is M2G equals M2A. Okay, so I only know two things. There's two things I don't know in this equation. I don't know T, and I don't know A. So let's go over to block one. Block one has a gravitational force M1G pulling down and T pulling up. And so in this case, F net Y is going to be equal to T minus M1G equals 
negative m1a. So it's negative because I'm assuming this is accelerating this way. I've made that assumption. If I'm wrong, I'd solve for a and I get a, a negative value, but I, I don't think I'm wrong. Okay. So that's another equation with t and a. Now I can solve this one for t and plug it in up there. So I'm going to say t add m1g to both sides. And I get m1g minus m1a equals t. And then substitute that in up here. And I get t, which is uh, m1g minus m1a minus mu k m2 g equals m2a. Now I want to get all the a terms on one side, so I'm going to add this to both sides, and I get m1g minus mu k m2g equals m1 plus m2a. So it's m1a plus m2a, so I factor it out m1 plus m2. Now I can divide both sides by m1 plus m2, and I get a equals m1g minus mu k m2g all of that over m1 plus m2. That's my acceleration. Now we may have a problem here. Okay, let me just put in my values and let's see what happens. So I'm going to go down here, turn on my calculator, drop that, drop. Uh, so I had m1 is 0.1 enter uh, oops, 9.8 times. Now I got mu k was 0.1, so I'm going to say 0.1 enter. Mu two, m2 is 0.05 times. g is 9.8, 9.8 times. And then I'm going to subtract that. And then I'm going to divide by m1 plus m2, which is 0.15. And I got 6.21. Meters per second squared. Um, so let's just really quickly compare that to this value, right? If I put it in for no friction, um, well, let's just do, we can do it this way. If there is mu k is zero, I have no friction, and this becomes this. It becomes the same equations. I don't even need to do that. Okay, this is clearly going to be a lower acceleration than with no friction, so that's good. And I think it's work, and I think we're all done. But now, imagine that. Imagine, let's just pick some crazy value. What if mu k is 0.9? Since it's imaginary, let's put this in, in red, because right, we're not really doing this. Let's say mu k equals 0 0.9. Okay, if I put everything in my calculator, I'm going to do that. So I have 0 0.1 enter 9.8 times, 0 0.9 enter. 0.05 times, 9.8 times. Okay, that one still works. The thing I'm looking at is, what if this value, what if m2 is large? What if, and this value is greater than that? Then this would give you a negative acceleration. This would say that if this mass gets too heavy with too much friction, it would actually accelerate up, which is not going to happen, right? Because if that was the case, the friction force would actually act in the opposite direction because it op opposes this motion. And in fact, you would have it not moving. Uh, so we could do, and I'll do this as another problem because this one's already long. So the question is, uh, what if I have, what value of the coefficient of friction would I need on mass two to make it not move at all? And that's what I'll do in the next problem.